Hello everyone, welcome to Impulsive Artistry. I'm artist Charles Wolf. thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited to show you today how to repair a canvas that has been damaged, and I'm gonna show you step by step what to do if this happens to one of your paintings and how you can fix it. All right, let's get to it. All right, so this painting is not one of my paintings, but this is a painting created by the artist L. Williams. Um, this is the grandmother of a family that I know, and on a recent move, the painting unfortunately got damaged. And so they asked me if I could please repair the painting and restore it as it is a family heirloom and something that they, you know, of course care about as it was created by a family member. And so I said I would absolutely be happy to fix this painting. And while I have it, I'm going to use this opportunity to show you how to fix your very own paintings as well. Here is a close-up of the damage, and this is a little hole at the bottom right-hand side of this painting. This is an impressionist piece, similar to what I like to do actually myself, so I thought I could be able to match it pretty closely and hide that damaged hole. Here is the other damage on the left-hand side. So here you can see the paint has been scraped off back to the underlayer when it was moved. And this was actually in a very large frame that we took out of the frame. And so you can see there's some nails around the outside of this canvas where it was attached to the frame. Okay, taking a different canvas, a fresh canvas, and an X-Acto knife, very sharp X-Acto knife, you want to cut a square patch about an inch wider than the hole itself. So I'm going to just eyeball this and create this square hole, this patch, just cutting it right out of the other frame. like that. Cut off the ends here. And there's the patch that we're going to use to repair this canvas. Okay, next I'm taking some tweezers and a pair of small scissors. Get my big old head in there as I'm trying to see carefully what I'm doing and I'm just trying to put the two pieces of canvas back together trying to lay them as flat as I can get them and put all the threads back in place as carefully as I can. Whenever you're repairing a canvas this way you really want to repair it from the back side. Don't try to do this from the front. It's much harder to do that. You want to put a piece of canvas behind and then paint and layer over the front and that's the way to go for sure. Here I'm just cutting off a few small excess threads off of the canvas that have come up. Now I could have cut off even more than I did, but because I knew I was going to be using some gesso to kind of fill in the hole, you could take as much time as you like with this step and really try to remove as many of those threads as you can. But for today, I decided to not mess with it too much and make further damage. Here is some glue. This is craft glue, white craft glue, and it is acid free. Very important that you get some acid free glue. That way it does not damage the canvas and the painting. So I'm going to be making a square here. It's very important that you don't put too much glue. And in fact, I think I already put too much glue and we'll have to back that off with some paper towel in a moment. But first I'm gonna to start to spread this out with an old paintbrush that I don't care about because it will ruin the paintbrush doing this. So grab one you don't care about and just trying to spread this out as evenly as I can. Pulling off the excess here with some paper towel. That looks good. And then back to my brush and smoothing it out as carefully as I can around the edges. Really get up to the edges of your patch, but don't put any glue in the center. And in fact, I'm using my finger there to make sure that I don't have any paint in the center, which I'm gonna place over the hole. glue on the corners especially 
flip it over, try to center it right over the hole, just be careful, and then smooth it out starting at the edges and working inward. Really try to get those edges to lay flat as possible. Use your finger, run it along, pressing down quite firmly. Take some books, lay them on top, and let the whole thing rest for about five to 10 minutes. Glue I'm using said five minutes, so I'm gonna give it five minutes and come back and continue on with the process. Okay, five minutes later here, now that it's dry, pressing down once more, just checking to make sure nothing is wiggling or moving. Looks good. Flip it over and take a look at the other side now. Close inspection here, trying to make sure that everything is laying pretty flat. Pretty happy with it, looks pretty good. I think we're ready to go on to the next step, which is to take some gesso, just pulling some off the lid here with a very small filbert brush, and just starting to fill in this gap this hole and the gesso will dry pretty quickly and work as a nice base for the layers of paint that we're going to put on top. And any loose threads will be taken care of by the gesso. Brush them out flat as I can. Again, you can take a moment before putting the gesso on, clip all of the threads off, but I decided not to mess with it too much. I really don't want to make the hole any bigger or damage the painting too much, so I'm being very careful and just trying to layer in the gesso. Now this takes a little bit because I am trying to be careful, so I'll put some glue on, pull off some of the excess, just trying to make it as flat and smooth as possible. If you can get the texture to be right, you can really hide the hole well when you put more paint on top. Okay, now I'll take my hair dryer and start to dry this gesso off and accelerate the process. Just checking it here with my finger, making sure that it is fully dry. Not quite yet, so we'll put some more air on it. Okay, going back in with that small brush that I was using before, just making sure that it's all laying flat and smooth. Back in with the air dryer again for a few more minutes just to really make sure that this is dry and is ready to go. And then back in with the small brush just to make sure everything is laying nicely and moving it around a little bit while it's still slightly pliable. I think we're just about ready to paint. Okay, now on to the painting. I put out a palette here. This is oil paint, by the way, as it was an oil painting originally. From left to right, the colors are yellow ochre, raw umber, lamp black, an ultramarine blue. I don't end up using the umber as much as I thought I would and really just focus on the black, blue, and yellow. Of course, black and yellow will make a nice olive green, very similar to what's already on the canvas. And I just toss in a little touch of blue here to make it a little bit more green and match the shade better of what's already on the canvas. Start to lightly apply these layers over the dried gesso. Using a small brush, I can mix the paint, put it up against the canvas and make sure that the paint is matching pretty good, and then go back and mix some more. I'm gonna take my time with this because I want it to look really good and be matching pretty accurately. At first, I started with some thinner layers of paint, but as it progresses, I decided to go a little bit heavier and help smooth out the texture even more with a thicker layer of paint, but you'll see that later on.
mixing together the yellow ochre, the lamp black, and a touch of that blue again, adding some more blue now. Touch more of the lamp black trying to match the color closer to what's underneath and create a transition. And already that's looking better, but we'll keep going at it, trying to smooth it over and get it to match even better. of the yellow, constantly bringing more of it in. Beautiful color, and it really matches what's already there. One of the main things about repairing paintings is that you need to match the colors as close as you can, take some time with it. I have a video about some basic color mixing, should you be interested in that, I'll show you some basic color mixes that you can do. Cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, raw sienna, those are very common yellow colors in oil paints oil painting and so I was pretty confident that it was yellow ochre that was the predominant color on the bottom half of this painting and I was right. As I started to mix it I was very happy with how closely the new paint was matching the pre-existing older paint and how well everything started to blend and come together beautifully. A little more of the yellow ochre there using a very small filbert brush and just blending it out trying to stay pretty much close to the, where the damage is but I'm allowing myself to be a little freer to try to match the kind of free brush style going on, blend through the section. Again, I don't want to cover up too much of the original painting and keep the integrity of the original as much as possible, but I also do need to match the brush style, so because it's so loose, I'm going to allow myself a little bit of leeway. Okay, coming back in here with my filbert brush and some more of the yellow ochre, blending that out. You can see that on this painting, higher up it's lighter, more muted down below. Looks like the artist put some cadmium yellow higher up, and the middle part has more of the yellow ochre, and then of course the bottom has the darker blues of the green, creating a nice gradient. A little bit more paint on this side, just trying to get the texture to be smoother and what I didn't quite realize is that I needed more paint I've been trying to blend and match the color which I've done so but because the paint layers I'm putting on now are so thin I'm not quite getting the results that I'm looking for I need a nice glob of paint to really cover this over in this section up here there's this little hole here I'm trying to fill in with paint that looks better bit darker here but the more you mess with something the more you can mess it up so once you get it looking pretty close to what you want leave it alone easy to overdo this stuff so be careful Okay, now I finally put some more paint out. What I've needed to do, especially for this right hand side, there's definitely some texture that's still there of the hole, a divot, and I want to cover that over by filling in more of the texture with a lot more paint. So I'm putting a lot of paint on my brush, fully loading both sides, lots of paint, and bringing this over thickly. And I can smooth out the edges, but I really want to bring up the texture here just to cover it over. Now it's actually pushing into too much, which is not a bad problem to have, actually. Rather have a little too much than not enough. Just blend out the edges and smooth things out a little bit more, but for now, this is working and looking a lot better. A little more of the lamp black, trying to make this a smoother transition. All right, and we're just about finished with this project. I thank you so much for watching this repairing a canvas video. I hope that you enjoyed this painting tutorial. I'll be back very soon with more painting lessons and painting tutorials. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already.
Tell me what you thought of this process. Did you find it helpful? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks.